Hello everyone, sorry about that false start from the previous match. It, seem, it sounds like one of the teams had an issue fielding players, but both agreed to reschedule for a future match this week, which by my imagination would probably be either tomorrow, Monday, or Tuesday. Thank you for coming, for those of you coming back, thank you for doing so. And this time we do have a solid match that will play out tonight. As always, feel free to use that suggestion box while the game is running, and enjoy the show. And now we'll bring it back to the casters. All right, all right, Silent. Thank you so much for that intro. It is me again, your caster extraordinaire, Hodohori, again here on Silent Marine's channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this special match between Pen 10 Viserion and Expandable Odyssey. Two mid two mid-table teams here going at it in the Owlet Miners division. Uh, Expandable Odyssey here sitting with a 3-3 three and three record after a rough start, getting three wins in a row on the trot, climbing up that table, now sitting in sixth place. We are now eighth with a record of 2-4 and four with a minus eight differential. Joining me as always, it's the sexy, the man himself, the color commentator extraordinaire. It is Pulse. How you doing, man? I'm doing fine. And this is why I love casting with you, Hodo, every <laughs> single time. A different intro, and every single time you blow me away. So thank you so much for that. And like you said, we have a very good matchup coming between two mid-table teams for the Outlet Miners today. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting here. Uh, the map pools that we mentioned in the original maps are in the original match that was supposed to be scheduled at 8 is going to be the same here in Miners. It will be Nepal, Route 66, Horizon, Blizzard World, and Oasis. So both teams look like they're going to be ready here. We're going to let them know that we are ready here as casters. Uh, it's going to be one of those matches. I think both teams here are going to be looking for a win with with expandable odyssey here looking to get to a, a four and three record and climbing the table you know surely but surely expandable odyssey is one of those teams with i think a full roster they have a full 12 ready to go pulse like uh versus penton viseron who really only runs basically a seven or eight man roster how deep uh with that depth that expandable odyssey has do you think that they might have a little bit of trouble sort of like you know meshing as a team or is that one of those things where we saw an outlet where a team sort of starts with too many players and then you sort of have to tone it down there towards as the season sort of goes on. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, there's sort of a balance between roster size and team coordination. And these teams, just to give some context, are between sort of 1900 and 2600 range. So mostly high silver, gold, low plat. And I, for teams around this level, generally you want a little bit bigger roster. And it's because everyone's sort of learning teamwork together as the season goes on, so you give a lot of people sort of different amounts of playtime, or you give a lot of people playtime, basically. You can find people that synergize really well together, but also generally hero pools are a little bit smaller around this SR. So that way you're able to sort of cover every hero if you have a bigger roster, and you're also able to sort of keep people into certain roles. So I know a lot of people that I know that are sort of around gold tend to have weird pools, maybe like one or two op tanks, one or two DPS, one or two supports, where it also allows you to sort of find a certain niche for that person in a team and while it may be a little bit more um what's the word a little bit more complicated you're, you're sort of showing yeah it's you're sort of showing what you're going to run when you run players but you can sort of also sort of pigeonhole people and give them a little bit better experience in that way so i think it gives it does give expandable a little bit of an advantage here yeah as we are going to start off our first match, which uh, first map, excuse me, it will be Nepal, and we're going to be starting here in on the Sanctum as both teams are settling in and getting their picks done. Assembly section now time going for both teams. It will be Penten Viserion in blue, and it will be Expandable Odyssey here in red. Um, I'm not exactly sure what they're going to run here, but the favorites to run on this map are Orisa Hog, are a very, very popular comp, and then Dive. Uh, also, like teams have been running a bit of the 3-3 three, three GOATS comp, but it looks like I think I'm seeing the standard sort of Orisa Hog here coming out from Expandable Odyssey, but it looks like Samson and Carvana here have decided to go with a front line of uh, Rhine Zarya on the other side. It's going to play a little differently here on the Pentan side versus uh, the Expandables. 
Yeah, definitely. And the comp that we see coming out from Pen 10 right now looks like they're sort of taking in the recent patch changes. So they're definitely going to try and field a Reaper for that extra lifesteal and they're running triple support to make sure the Ryan's are to stay healthy and just to top off the Reaper anytime he's not full health. And this is definitely sort of something that you'd only see because of that patch that on Thursday. Yeah, and it looks like here uh, they immediately run onto the point as it looks like Pentan is actually taking the long way around, trying to flank. Two kills here actually already try, uh, trading off as it looks like Primatar actually takes out a love, but a big, big boop there by Rippin Pippin as everyone here from Expandable Aussie stayed on the point and literally just sort of made uh, Penten Viser uh, Viserion actually come to them and that's going to cost Penten as it looks like they're going to give up the point here and it's very very hard to retake on this map so uh, first advantage you're going to expandable Odyssey. Yeah and there was a little bit of a misplay because when they run these ground based comps you want to be really careful going inside sort of the one by the pit you definitely want to make sure you take advantage of the indoor cover against a composition like this Hog, Orisa, Ponzo, Junkrat. So use that inside room with the Mega Health Pack to avoid all poke damage, and then make them play on the outside of the point here. That way you have more boots instead of the, uh, the Lucio, and in addition to that, some additional force back from the Reaper. That way you can force yeah. it. As it looks like there was a big dragon there by Jack, as he was able to clear the back line there of uh, uh, Pentan Viserion. So it looks like they're able to sort of hold, but there were a lot of players lost here. Squirtlesburg still alive, uh, was not taken out by the rest of his team, but he looks like he's going to reset. And it is going to be a hold here from Expandable Odyssey, already here at 47%. Their team, they're doing a good job here, and they looks like they've fallen back a little. They decided not to be aggressive against the door here against Penten. What do you think of that strategy, Pulse? Generally, that's what you see higher level teams running. That way, the Orisa, Hog, Junkrat, all those sort of spammy heroes get the ability to spam down the teams as they're coming into the point. And that's sort of how they're playing now. They did a swap out the Zarya for a Hog, so it looks like it's a tough pick coming through for that. Yeah, as another boop again, Samson can't stay on the point as he went flying. Trimatar gets two with the uh, with the tire, and then it is going to be just cleanup here. Carvana was able to finish off Rip and Pippin, but Pippin has gotten so many boops off the point here, they just haven't been able to stay on the point. Yeah, definitely. And I think another sort of issue that we see with Pen 10 coming through and the way that they're approaching these fights is they're using the speed boost to engage onto the point rather than using it to keep people up and on healing. So they're sort of speeding in through all of this poke and trying to make sure they get a foothold instead of sort of playing it a little bit slower like you normally would against the like, poke damage. Comp. Yeah, Squirtlesburg there, there gets a big, big boop. The Bongo goes down here on the side of uh, Expandable Odyssey. They're trying to see if they can sort of force here, but it looks like Pentan getting some kills as a Reaper ult comes in into the back. It's not going to be able to do anything. Accelerate got booped off. Jack and Trimatar here trying to sort of hold the point, but it looks like Pentan Vizera uh, has actually gotten control. It looks like their Anna from uh, Expandable Odyssey is trapped. They're sort of stalling her on the outside. Finally get to kill her, and now it's their chance to see whether or not they can hold this point here on Sanctum. Yeah, I really like the switches coming through. They did swap a little bit. It makes Expandable work a little bit harder, harder with that Junkrat and Hanzo. Uh, and they're still running the Reaper, so anytime they get in, they have to worry about far above and Reaper on the ground. And now they're sort of at a little bit of a disadvantage. They would have been more so had we not seen the McCree switch, because they're running at two or three alts. But Expandable really has all the time in the world here to retake the slows they want. Yeah, so another tire here coming out from Trimatar takes out Hephaestus right away. Samson almost getting booped again, but this time he just gets straight up taken out as it looks like the members of Expandable Odyssey are trying to take back this point as best they can. Carvana trying to hook Jax onto the point here, but it looks like A-Love uh, was actually underneath the lip, so was unable to do so. Big ult there by Squirtlesburg, able to take out two, so it's a matter of just now trying to take out Jack. Celery takes out Jack right before he was able to high noon. Very, very close call there, but he was able to hold the point here for Penta. Yeah, and they actually end up using the High Noon there when they probably could have saved it for the next push, but High Noon's not a super big impact on all the time, so I wouldn't worry about it too much, especially as uh, Expandable's still coming in with about a 30% lead. Yeah, the thing about it is, is uh, N10 here are, are short a couple players, so they don't actually get jumped on right away. I don't think they noticed the big advantage here. Celery here on the Reaper, trying to stay alive, but he's surrounded by four or five players. He was taken out right away as a hook comes in into the distance, unable to take that player out. As it looks like Click Clack 
uh, is able to sort of take out Samson now. It looks like Carvana trying to sort of hold on to the point. Squirtleberg here now on the Genji, trying to sort of hold off and make sure that the switch does not happen. Trimitar is purple. Got to be careful about dying here. Point actually switches up at 95%. There are no members left here from Pentad by Viserion as it looks like overtime is going to tick down. Samson unable to make it back in time. So first blood here goes to Expandable Honesty. Yeah, and once Expandable Honesty got all the way up to 50%, we knew it. For, or an uphill fight, rather, for 10-10, yeah. just because it's so hard to swap to that point, and if you have that sort of 99-0 lead, you can honestly just push until you have 5-6 alts if you want, and then just blow them all at once while the defense has to be really on point with cycling alts to make sure they don't overcommit, make sure that they always have responses to the attacking team. It is, though, satisfying if you are able to come back from 99-0 and take the point. And Penten there did a pretty decent job, was unable to hold that final fight, and it cost them. And now we've got a 1-0 lead here for Expandable Odyssey. As we go into the to Shrine here, as it looks like we see a brig on both sides, both teams looking like they're gonna go goats. As it looks like, though, Jack on the side of Expandable Odyssey is opting for the DPS pick here. It's gonna be the odd man out, as it looks like Triple Tank, Triple here on the other side, but Jax actually is able to take out Samson and Celery goes down here on Pentan Viseron. So Pentan actually falling back, losing two players really, really quickly. Uh, nobody actually, is there I think one person on the point going to be able to unlock it? No, there's nobody on the point here. They so it's up. not going, they pushed all the way up to try to make sure that Pentan went back to spawn and now are going to cap it. Yeah, and again, that's not the worst sort of misplay. They have plenty of time to make sure that they get all the kills they want and cap it. Generally, you'd leave someone behind, but it's it's nothing too huge here. We do see a couple of interesting swaps. Squirrel Squirt was sort of on the Genji at the end. He came back to play Lucio, so that's something that I mentioned earlier with the hero pools, where people sort of are playing what they're comfortable with. And I think that's exactly why Jack is on the McCree with this sort of ghost background instead of the Diva. And it's just because he really opened up that fight with the flashbang, a couple right clicks, and they had an instant advantage. So it looks like they're playing something they're very comfortable with. Yeah, and the thing about it is, with the Diva changes recently, it might not be good to actually go in there and play like a haphazard Diva. As our Raj Shatter comes in here from D uh, from Dees and is able to knock down Samson and take out the members here of Fenton. It looks like control here very much with Expandable Odyssey as they're trying their best to basically hold off this point. They're trying to come around here and finish off the Genji. Squirtlesburg doing his best, doing, doing his best uh, a dodge impression here as A-Love here now falling back. A-Love just needs to get back or he just die right away. He is able to make it out. Unbelievable. Is able to stay alive there, but controlled here still with a Phantom Honest. That would have been a huge stagger had they got him, but again, it's pretty hard to shoot a Lucio that's just skating away as fast as possible. So we're going to have a quick recontest on this next thing. Not really. Thing. You can honestly sort of play this rally slow. They have the Pharah and they... The rally changes are in, so now it's going to disappear after 30 seconds. And they can sort of use this time to set up and make sure they get the poke damage necessary to engage it correctly. Yeah, and the, this is the thing. It's like, so, like, you can't sort of wait it out too long because you're giving up too much percentage. But at the same time, it's like, you know, every, you can burn 15, 16 seconds and then just get into the fight. And then as the fight sort of goes on, the rally's effects go away. This guy actually gets a big kill on the Samson, but a uh, barrage from up in the air is unable to do anything. Ravathon catches most members of Expandable Odyssey. They're off the point when the cap actually happens. It's Carvana and Squirtlesburg are able to stay onto the point. He actually takes Infestus down, but Squirtlesburg trying to be a hero here. And Carvana, it's only Carvana and Jax here on the point trying to see if they can go Zarya v Zarya. Unable to do so, Girlberg and Carvana go down. They're going to have to flip the point here a little bit, but it looks like Alem trying to sort of stall as best they can. Now it's rotating out. Is Samson and Celery here trying to hold the point off? Samson goes down. The Celery is going to be in the air trying to be able to rain rockets. You can't contest, but she's too high up. Point actually switches here as Deese is on the point. They're not, they're going to need to kick Celery out. They absolutely do. Jack on that McCree has been a very useful pick as the fight continues and Jack going ham here, but Deese finishing off the rest of the members as Samson gets a big shatter, but nobody there to help with the, with the players down on the point. 99% here. It's a matter of just clearing up, but Aleph gets Carvana back up as this fight will continue. Carvana and Aleph here on the point. They need to get rid of Aleph first. They do. Carvana now is tell is helpless in the corner. Gets taken out. Overtime takes down. There's still been a Farah in the air the entire time, but Celery is too high to contest. So therefore, Expandable Odyssey will get the first map win here of the night over Pentan Viserion 2-0 here on the point.
on Nepal. Yeah, and it was relatively close. There are a couple fights that we saw Pen 10 have a lot of trouble engaging on, but it also started, started to fix itself as we went on. Like, we saw a lot of comp switches. They're very flexible in how they're playing against this team. They're a little bit slower to adapt in their physical approaches, like how they're walking up to the point, but they're very fast to notice sort of, oh, hey, a Pharaoh would be really good into this, or, oh, hey, maybe we Wonderful. need to swap our other DPS to the Genji. So they're, they're making those compositional changes very quickly. Yeah, and then that's really, really good. So they're recognizing what they need to do. It's just at this point, uh, doing it a little quicker or maybe just, you know, giving up the ult advantage might be just a little too much for them right now. So it looks like uh, first blood here going to Expandable Odyssey, but I think that we're in for a long night here because Penten Viseron here plays them relatively even on that map also. So we're going to go into our next map, which is going to be Route 66. Now, this is a favorite of mine, but it's one of those one of those maps that actually can play to very many comps. And since we are going to be in the miners level, uh, typically a lot of teams will try to run Widows on both sides. We might not necessarily see that, but this is a map that's sort of really good for quad DPS pulse. So, uh, but at this level, I don't know if teams would actually go that way. So what do you think is going to happen here in our next map? I think it really depends on what they practiced or what they talked about doing, because like it, like you were saying, Route 66 is one of those maps that's very training grounds -y for a lot of new types of comps. I'd say King's Row is one, especially for like tank comps that people like to experiment on with like running tanks and supports. It was kind of one of the first ones where Ghosts really got noticed. Um, and Route 66 is kind of the opposite in that really good for testing out like off tanks and dps so it's we've seen a lot of quad dps in higher elos recently for route 66 a lot of triple dps like triple sniper but again this is sort of gold so you might not see all those snipers one thing that was notable for route 66 probably about a year or two ago was it was one of the first maps that somber really saw play a lot of maps that may saw play so those here are still being very viable if you play around them correctly and it's always fun when you get to see sort of lower teams adapt and use what they're comfortable with on this map because a lot of things are a lot more viable on this map yeah so it's going to be very interesting to see uh penten viserion here actually looks like hold on looks like teams are switching so it will be uh penten viserion will be now in red uh it looks like zigox who is our lobby host shout out to him actually no looks like um that is not going to happen so teams are going to go back there or so <laughs> just a couple a little bit of confusion here um just between the teams uh so just to make sure what is going on uh it is one zero here to expandable odyssey over pen 10 viserion in the miners division here of outlet uh both teams switching back and now they're going to get started now so expandable odyssey will be on offense first and it will be pen 10 viserion here will be defending so big girls and this train wreck will be the background for your second map route 66 lots of elevation changes here especially through the first two and then you get this sort of dreadful narrow hallway that finishing this map is actually a, an achievement all in itself finishing this map with uh, a significant time bank is uh spectacular so with now the team's all set and ready to go. It will be uh, Expandable Odyssey here in red. I'm expecting to see Jack here possibly again on the McCree as we've seen him twice now sort of buck the trend with regards to uh, normal picks on maps, but it looks like he's going to be coming out here with a Sombra, which is something that you had mentioned about uh, the first time we saw a, a viable character on this particular map when she was new and it was, uh, it was Sombra. Yeah, and it's because of these two mega health packs. There's one in the tunnel right to the left on low ground uh, as the cart sort of rounds that first corner. That's really important to make sure that you have control of as a defending team. And also there's one in Big Earls, and both of these are very accessible to both teams as you're sort of nearing point A. And if you have control about that, you deny a lot of non-support healing from the attacker side. And that's sort of one of the reasons why she's run here. And again, Sombra is still a hitscan character, and Jack was looking very good on the hit scan with McCree earlier, so I expect to see some pretty stellar plays from Jack as well this time. Yeah, as, as it looks like Jack is actually going to be scouting instead 
going to use that to actually not actually control with McCree, as Jack will go to the Bastion. So, viva el presidente, as he will be on the pirate ship, as Dees and Trimitar here will try to protect him onto the payload, as they notice that it is going to be a pulled pork combo here that's going to be on top of Big Earl. They're going to be coming around the corner here, and the engage is going to happen. They're probably waiting, trying to figure out what was taking them so long to get up, but it looks like now they see uh, the horror that is at them is it looks like Swirtlesburg here trying to get behind to make sure that uh, like he can maybe go after the sports or maybe sort of dislodge Jack there onto the payload. Jack actually got moved and is not on the payload now. Rippin' Pippin is actually taken out there by Squirtlesburg is now Jack's positioning on the Bastion. Not the most favorable in the world considering where the payload is. Squirtlesburg now takes out Trimitar and the team is really split here as it looks like they're able to get it to the first corner but the rest of the team here has had to fall back. Squirtlesburg has wreaked havoc there in the back and as I say that, Jack goes down to A-Love. Uh, a love Lucio there and is going to delay the team a little further. Jack getting rezzed as the fight will continue. All six now available here uh, from, uh, excuse me, from Expandable Odyssey as they are going to go in. And so it looks like Jack is ulting here, trying to deal with Squirrelsburg as best he can. Those, those shots there from the Bastion not hitting their target. Celery able to eliminate Trimitar here with the tire as the teams here refuse to disengage as Samson finally takes Jack out. And I think that's going to be a full reset here for Expandable Odyssey. Yeah, and A-Love again gets a couple kills, then gets out on that Lucio, so stellar, stellar Lucio play coming out. You do see a switch from the Bastion going to Tracer now, and when the cart's sort of hard to get to, that's something that you'd expect for the DPS to swap off to something that's a little more mobile. But again, they're sort of looking like they're wanting to run dive into this more pulled pork stationary defense bunker comp style. Yeah, so it looks like here, uh, as uh, Deese is actually going to come in and jump right onto Samson. Here, Celery, though, is able to take out Trimitar right away. Jax gets d mech as Lucio all comes out on the defense. Uh, it looks like Jack unable to get anything with the bombs. Worldsburg takes out Flick Clack here uh, on the offense as the defense here holding relatively steady. Jax has got to be careful. Don't want to get D-Mech. He actually ends up getting D-Mech here trying to get, shoot back in. They're going to try to stall him as best as they can. Deese was able to take out Samson, so they lose the Orisa on defense as the reset is able to come in. They might be able to take advantage of this comp because Orisa not necessarily the fastest to get back here onto Big Girl. Yeah, we see Orisa just spawning in, so if the attack is really quick, then they can take this 5v6, but they have to move fast. It's kind of dilly-dallying around a little bit, and it looks like the Orisa's just getting back now, so they are fighting the 6v6. Yeah, so it looks like Alov did a great job of burying their Orisa back, and Samson takes out Deese. But two kills there on the defense might has turned this into a 5v4. So Jack with a big pulse bomb here. Rippin' Pippin pulls out the transcendence here to make sure that Jack stays alive as Alev and Squirtlesburg have been running as a, like a little mini pair here trying to deal with what has been going on there on the point. Alev finally gets taken down. Squirtlesburg is back, but he's not going to be able to do anything as he's lost his healing partner uh, on, uh, on that Lucio. So now he's just basically being a menace here to the remaining members of his Fandal Odyssey. He does get a Nano Blade here, so let's see what he can do. He's able to take out Rip and Tiffin and Jack here, and could he turn it around himself? He's got three. He's going for four. He's trying to deal with whatever back. Oh, he gets taken out, but the rest of his team is back, and they are able to stop his Fandal Odyssey. Jax there has no health remaining. Lose, uh, looks like it's a monkey ult here by Deez as he's trying to sort of hold on to the point here. Celery and Trimitar are on the point trying to do their best, but it is an angry monkey here on the point, unable to dislodge anybody. Jack on that tracer trying to be a nuisance, but kills have been just going all the way for Penta and Viserion as they're trying their best here to sort of hold on. Bongo comes down here for a little bit of a DPS boost. Down goes Rippin Pippin who had went to the Moira. Now it's just a matter of cleanup. They've got to get rid of Jack here on the Tracer. Lucio ult here just to make sure that they're going to be able to hold this point. Trimitar now trying his luck with the blade, trying to see if they can get him down. They're not able to focus. He gets A-Love down as they're trying to sort of squeeze out this final point. Penta Viserion here unable to focus. Click Clack gets taken down. Big pulse bomb there by Jack. Takes down Samson. So they're slowly but surely winning this fight, but Celery takes out Trimitar as spawns are getting longer and longer, but the 
The HP is getting bigger and bigger because it is two tanks here on the side of Expandable Odyssey who are trying to stall this point. Bomb goes up in the air, nowhere to hide here. Carvana actually is able to stay alive because he was nano boosted. Squirtlesburg again here with an ult, trying to see if he can finish anybody out. That's going to do it. For a second there, I thought Expandable Odyssey was able going to make some sort of rank comeback on there. But not to be, Penten Pyserion able to hold at point A and only give up 69.56 people. Yeah, point A is probably not the easiest to push through in all of Overwatch, but it's definitely doable, especially for, with four minutes. You have plenty of tries to do it as a tag team, so things are looking really good for Pen 10 right now. Squirrel Score getting a couple really big blades in that fight to make sure that they were always at an advantage on point, sort of as it was approaching point A, they got, I believe, two three-man blades. So mm -hmm. really good Dragon Blades by Squirtle Squirk. And also uh, we saw a lot of really clutch Lucio plays from Alev just getting melee kills and sort of making sure that he backed up Squirtle Squirk all, all the time. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like Squirtlesburg was uh, Squirtlesburg. <laughs> He's, it's hard to say. The, Squirtle Squirk, I call it. It's like it the Squirtle, Squirtle call from Bullymox. <laughs> Squirtle you know? yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, but I keep trying to call him Squirtlesburg for some reason, as if Squirtle had a town. <laughs> so Squirtle Squirt there doing a really, really great job there on the Genji. Now I'm interested in seeing what the rest of uh, uh, the team here from Expandable Odyssey is going to do. Like DC looks like they're going for a forward hold here because they know they're going to need an extra fight here. And I like the strategy. They're going to be trying to be aggressive, build up their alts. And even if they lose the fight up front here, they're going to have another fight closer to the girls. Yeah. And like you said, the big girls fights, this is a much more standard composition. They're really not trying like how we saw the Bastion. Bastion's a little, like, this isn't a great map for Bastion just because there is a little bit of high ground for defenders to hide behind if they want. But this four goats hold is, is something that uh, you kind of see a lot more commonly at higher levels. And it, you make the attacking team fight for every. Yeah, and that's, what, that's exactly what they're trying to do now. Jax is able to take down Carvana. But that's not going to really matter because they do have spawn advantage here, so Carvana's going to be able to come back pretty much almost instantaneously. They haven't lost a member, but they're just giving up space here. As Ribbon Pippin goes down now, so they lose a, a healer on this fight, and that might be the way to sort of slow them down, and that's exactly what they've done. They realize they have the, the advantage here. Now they're going to charge in here, and Carvana trying to run for her life, not going to be able to do so. They're going to let the, the D.Va stay in uh, stay in baby form. I think if I'm Carvana here, there's probably going to be very little way to get my mech back. I probably would have just sort of jumped off the cliff. Yeah, generally that's what you'd see happen here, but if Carvana is confident in getting mech back, it's not going to be a huge title. You just need to be careful of playing into this rally and playing into the couple alts coming up, like the Shatter and the Ground Sound coming up on defense. Make sure you keep track of where they are and how it plays out so you don't play into them. Yeah, was, as you say that, Graviton actually caught three and down they go. So Penta and Viserion there, unable to do anything with that, but they make uh, they make Expandable Odyssey blow some ults here. 231, they've gotten the payload here up to the first corner, so they still have a shot here. Squirrel Squirt and Celery with two big ults here. If they can get a big win, uh, Paul, if you uh, if you actually like, if you can get two big alts here, one or the other for Squirrel Squirt, Crumbs, or Celery, you could win this fight outright here. Here comes the tire. Ooh, big shields there by Jack as he's able to protect himself and Trimitar here. Nothing to do in here on the, on the big tire. Blade now coming out right into the middle of a transcendence with Celery able to take out Rip and Pippin. So one healer down here on the defense. They're making a fight for every inch as the Bongo comes down here. DC swing it away, but he is purple, so no healing's gonna come through here. But I think it might be that the fight could already have gone the way here of uh of of Expandable Odyssey as it looks like they do have a bit of control here. A Love is going to have to run back here to Carvana. And it looks like they've won another fight with 130 left to go. Yeah, they've won that fight, but they're also sort of in the back burner on alts right now. They only have Brig Alt while we see a barrage slowly building up for Squirtle Squirt, but they also have another tire, they have a nano boost, and they have a diva bomb. So there's a lot going for the offense on this push. In addition, the McCree is just walking back right now, so if they can pressure this before he can really get back in the fight, they can open things up. Yeah, they 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 actually used two 
two immediate ults there. They sent a tire and a bomb into the backline because they wanted to guarantee a kill. A little bit of overuse on the uh, on the uh, on the ults there, but it got the brig out of the way as this payload is now moving and all of the space is being given up here by expandable Odyssey. Penton Vizeron can see the goal as they come around the corner. Golden Box of Victory is right there as Baby Diva here gets d -Mech. They gotta make sure they finish her off. It looks like it's just going to be Trimitar here trying to hold off the members of Pentan Vizeron, but she can't do it herself. We are tied here at ones going into halftime. Pulse, I knew this was going to be a hard match between both of these teams. We've seen, it looks like Pentan Vizeron here looking uh, looking like the better team here on Escort with a solid defense here on 66. So this one is going to definitely be a barn burner. Yeah, and like we were talking about earlier with how they're playing these, I do think that Pentan has been a little bit faster to try and adapt to sort of what we see coming out from Expandable Odyssey. And they might not always be the, the best sort of ideas, like it took Samson a while there to swap from the Orisa to, to Rhine, but they're doing it eventually and they're sort of recognizing, oh hey, just make sure I get my all around swap. So because they're doing that, they're seeing a little bit more advantageous when they're paying attention to this. Like sort yeah, of- Yeah, absolutely. Fights. And I think it comes with experience that like, you know, when you, when to switch is one of those things you sort of have to feel out. And at this level, you're trying to sort of learn what the, uh, what the what the time spy specifically is? Pentan might be doing it a little slowly, slowly, but they're actually noticing that they need to do uh, massive changes sometimes to take the advantage of what the other team is running. And I think that uh, that Farah pick there uh, at around like two minutes was actually a really really good switch because it really through expandable Odyssey for a loop because they really had to sort of fall back. Uh, they didn't have Jack on the field yet. Uh, on the McCree, he had just died, and they noticed that coming out with the with the Farah sort of forced their hand, and they had to sort of fall back. So it's going to be very, very interesting here as we're going to go uh, next to Horizon Lunar Colony, which is a two CP map that isn't necessarily everybody's favorite, but it is one of those weird ones where uh, draws are very, very common. But it's also one of those ones where m combinations of of what you run here on Horizon isn't necessarily uh, the same. A lot of teams like to run goats here because it is uh, one of those things where you can sort of rush onto the point and just fight on the point as a uh, as an offensive team. But also defense defensive teams also like to protect using goats. So it's going to be very interesting to see what these. Yeah, and there are also a couple different variants that you've seen of people sort of coming up with. Like I've seen. A couple teams try Symmetra just to teleport their tanks and supports to the uh, to the actual point faster. I've also seen a lot of teams doing a more forward hold on sort of the ledge by outer space with like a Bastion or Orisa, and sometimes with a Widow. But that was something that was sort of played a lot more at like Overwatch League level with like the actual Widow and Sniper picks. But Bastion is still one of those heroes that's very very prominent. So Bastion's yeah. Bastion pretty good. Symmetra pretty good. Lots of tanks. And Port's pretty good. This was one map where we saw quad tank really like, sort of being perfected in higher levels a couple patches ago. And there's always just some weird stuff that teams may be practicing or have like sort of one of those QP strats or just like a strat to surprise people. And whenever you're on defense first and have like a surprise attack strat, you can really throw teams for a loop. Yeah, absolutely. So it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen here. Both teams now are going to switch sides as it looks like they're not going to have a, any delayed halftime here. So it looks like both teams are just immediately going to go in. Some switches coming in, I think, uh, uh, as it looks like the lobby host Zigox here uh, is asking to see if there are going to be any switches. Penten and Visera Viserion normally... Uh, they don't switch very many people, but Expandable Odyssey, as we said at the beginning of the cast, actually has uh, 12 members on their roster, so they are very full. So it could be one of those things in which uh, they could go for a massive switch, and hell, hell, they could switch their entire team if they really wanted to, if everybody was here. But it is a Saturday night, so, you know, Saturday night, not necessarily the, the most busy Overwatch time, as people like to go out and party, Pulse. Uh, but it looks like <laughs> not the hardcore casters. We can no, it. not the hardcore casters. You got the hardcore casters on one side calling open division there on uh, broadcast G and an Elo Hell, and then you've got us on Saturday night sacrificing our nights off to uh, to show you guys the Owlet tournament. So you know we don't go out and party. 
<laughs> Too busy grinding Overwatch, getting that bread, you know. The usual. Exactly. Or or in my case, not grinding Overwatch and just casting in general, as uh, I was getting my head clicked off when I was uh, playing against uh, Book Meme today. <laughs> so, <laughs> because, ladies and gentlemen, I suck. I am a terrible, terrible player uh, because I refuse to practice. I don't heed my coaching, uh, coaching uh, advice to the players that I coach because you know what? You know, coach is prerogative. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> yeah. So now, well, you've, you've been a great coach for us, so yeah, I, I can respect oh. that. Exactly. So now, like, so it, as we switch into Horizon Lunar Colony, uh, there's going to be a side switch as it looks like it will be Expandable Odyssey here going on the defense first. And Penta Viserion, uh, Viserion will be going on offense. So now, with them being on offense, the onus is going to be on them to see what how they're going to push this. Uh, and it'll be interesting as they've come up initially here with a six support lineup. <laughs> which is not going to be right. I gotta I gotta hope for that man that's oh, anytime I, I see it. that it makes my heart a little happy but on defense we see something that's very likely to happen they're already pretty much to point with it but this is that bastion strat I was talking about where you sort of get a bastion all the way up to the front sort of right awning if you want to call it an awning clear out those bars and then just set up a Marissa shield and it makes it very hard for attackers to attack and one sort of common flaw I've seen in how people like to attack this is they really like to try and contest the Bastion up there when the best thing to do would to generally just be speed boost under and force the Bastion to relocate to a point and maybe sort of get them while they're moving. We'll see if the attackers can figure out and how they, they push into this though. Yeah, they are running uh, a comp that will sort of help them get through this as now they realize that the Bastion is there. Samson's going to back up immediately. It's like, well, he doesn't want to use up the shield. So they're going to sort of basically stick themselves in the room and they're going to need to use the Lucio boost to get them around the corner and away from everybody as look they use that boost perfectly coming around from the side but a love actually gets taken out as members are actually jumping into space squirtle squirt here is going to go into space to see if he can come out on the other side and see if he can sort of snipe them from behind the rest of the members here going into space there are four members now of uh of Penta and Viserion here in space, so they're gonna try to see if they can sort of pick them off, or maybe at least draw the attention of the team here into space and sort of force them out here and make them fight here. If I'm Expandable Odyssey, I don't take the bait. Yeah, but you see the Lucio's trying to back cap off. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what they were trying. The entire team back just to deal with the Lucio. Yeah, and that's the thing. They were basically trying to bait them out so that the two that they had killed goes onto the point, and now they've actually evened up the fight here, 5v5, as Rip and Pippin got taken out. They moved the Bastion here onto the high ground, but kills still coming here uh, for Penta and Viserion, as Carvana and Celery were able to get two big kills. Now, that's, now, it's just going to be a matter of can they use their spawn advantage to move in on this three-man defense, take advantage, but Alove gets taken out before he got back to spawn. That's going to be a big kill. Yeah, and it's definitely going to be a, at least another 10 second stagger. But we see a Dragon Strike coming up from Celery and Hans. though. If they're playing for this Dragon Strike, which is win condition with the current comp, we do see the Widow swap off finally because Widow's not very effective against these Orisa shields and they can more or less stay at infinitely. But they're going to come in with a Dragon Strike and a Genji Dash to follow up on it. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting here. Can they break it? Celery is 1% away. Hephaestus got taken out, and here comes Jack. He's ulting now. He's immediately trying to take down Samson, but it looks like they're probably going to save this, so Celery is not going to be using his dragon anytime soon because they know this push is pretty much over. They lose both of their tanks here. They, they're just now looking for extra kills, uh, and it looks like they're sort of running around the point here and seeing if they can sort of demech and get anybody that they can. Squirtle scoring there, able to demex Jax. So that's probably all that they're going to be able to get here as Salary tries to back up Alev down again. But Salary in a position here uh, where the rest of the team is now sort of coming as he's sort of positioned himself on the backside. Hephaestus again gets taken out. They need to reset here as a team and stay together. But they're split so much that I don't know if Squirtle Squirt and Salary can join the rest of the tank line. It's going to be hard for them to get back up, especially since the Bastion's set up, located a bit. The only really bright side we see from the attacker right now, they did use Valkyrie on the last push instead of saving it for when they really probably could have used it for this fight. Yeah, as a tire's going to come in, and it's a huge tire! Trimatar actually takes down three in the small room as they're not able to break the Bastion. Celery here still has the Hanzo ult, but he's not going to be able to use it against anything, and now he's being chased down by Jax. 
48 seconds left to go here, and all's looking good here for Expandable Odyssey, looking for a full point A hold with that Bastion this trend. Definitely looks like they weren't prepared for this Bastion. Samson and Carvana have been having a heck of a time just trying to even build all charge, but really haven't gotten to their first set of tank ults yet. And Celery's just been holding on to this dragon straight, waiting for the perfect sort of ult when really they just need something to get that Bastion moved so they can get into it. Yeah, and here comes Jack again. He's just, he's basically just able to sort of destroy whatever they're trying to do here onto the point. Like, what it is is Aleph is getting caught out in the back, and that Lucio is so necessary to take them out. Celery finally uses his Dragon Strike to take down Click Clack, but too many kills here from Expandable Odyssey, so it's not going to be able to be happen here for Penta and Viserion, they're going to have to be able to pull hold here in order for a draw. Spanable Odyssey using that Bastion strategy to perfection as no percentage points given up here on them. It definitely looks like the attacking team wasn't really prepared for it as well, because that's one of those strategies if you don't know how to properly approach a Bastion on a certain position, then you're just going to see that happen every fight where the Bastion gets one or two free picks and it's kind of a hard call sometimes in the heat of the moment because you're not sure if he wants to engage or ignore the Bastion. And it's also one of those things that they probably didn't make the switches that uh, they really needed to there. Specifically, a D.Va would have been really helpful, and D.Va, even with the nerf, is very helpful against a Bastion because the only thing the nerf changed is sort of the uptime in between uses of Defense Matrix. So if you're DMing a Bastion, nothing really changes there. You're going to hold down the whole time. Uh, we saw a couple of offensive changes but just in general holding on all too long and not really sure how to approach that bastion were sort of their downfall so that yeah and and that's the thing it's like you know i think we'll look back on this match and when they see that they'll realize it's like yeah we should have gone here but it looks like now uh, i mean they, they were sorry going they they can play diva because we see carvana here here on the diva uh, on the diva here for Penta and Viserion. So they're going to hold exactly almost in the same place here, just without a Bastion. On the other side here, on offense, it looks like it's going to be a 3-3 combo. Jack here on the Sombra, probably going to come out and scout to see whether or not a 3-3 uh, uh, a goat's comp is going to be useful as Jack gets what he sees on here and he sees the high, uh, the high defense. He's going to switch to Zarya and it is going to be a goat's comp here coming for Expandable Odyssey. They're going to be comfortable with what they have. They feel like that they can overcome this. And here they come, coming through the same area that uh, uh, Penta and Viserion were sort of holding through, but there's really not enough damage to take out anybody there on that side. So Squirrel Spork here above the team, but they're not going to be able to eliminate anybody before they get to the point. The difference in the defenses was that Bastion was just unloading so much DPS that they were able to eliminate people before they even got to the point. And here with three big kills uh, from the side of Expandable Odyssey. This defense here is going to be very, very difficult uh, to sort of maintain his salary here, trying his best to be on that junk right and just eliminate all of these tanks, but they're just so heavy and there's so much health. Now it's just a matter of seeing whether or not they can just sort of force them off the point here at the rest of Expandable Odyssey is able to just sort of block them from coming in, only holding, being able to hold one at a time, Rip and Pippin being able to sort of keep everybody up. Everybody's purple here, but now the tanks are able to just prevent Penten Viserion from coming on, and it is Expandable Odyssey getting an Express Horizon Lunar Colony 1-0. Uh, they basically just outlasted them on that point. Definitely outlast is the, the word to use there, because for a while, it, it was just kind of a brawl, no one was really dropping, but one of the benefits of running sort of that triple tank, triple support is just it's so hard to kill anything unless you have a discord or a uh, on a purple on people. So just sort of the benefits of that. And when you're fighting on a close point like that, you have to sort of be in the range of the Rhine, the Zarya, and the D.Va. So it makes it harder for the defense and they just out and in the end, like you said, outlasted and took them all down. Yeah. I mean, like, that that's why people love the GOATS comp. I mean, like, it's one of those things in which if you can have a healer in your three tanks up, and if that healer is an area of effect healer, like a Lucio or a Brig, um, they are going to be very, very difficult to take down. And that's the advantage, that you can basically outlast the team, stay on the point, take one... Every time you take one out, it's just going to be one of those things that it's just going to be heavy advantage for the team with the triple tank, triple support. So... 
as we get into that, uh, we do have a, uh, there is going to be a victory in sight here for Expandable Odyssey. If they are able to win Blizzworld, they will take this match over Pen10 Viserion. Three to one. Pen10 Viserion here need Blizzard World to even up the match so that we can go into our fifth and final match uh, map. Excuse me. It would be Oasis, which is a pretty big toss up because uh, it's not anybody's real favorite sort of uh, control map. There are just a lot of variety that could be played on Oasis. So uh, Pen10 Viserion here going to be looking for a big, big hold here on Blizzard World uh, in order to take this map uh, match to five. I got to say expandable looked really good on that last control point. So since this is a hybrid, the control points first, and we really want to see pen 10 sort of make it adaptations, I guess a little bit faster to their lineup, especially if they're running something like the Bastion, like they just ran on horizon, because that's really what sort of caught them with their pants down. They weren't really sure how to approach it. And they kept just trying to slam their face into it until it didn't work. When we have been saying sort of the benefits that, we've seen from this team is that they're a little bit faster to adapt and when they weren't on horizon it really sort of just bit them in the butt yeah it, it really did and you're going into a map here that people haven't really perfected yet so there are multiple ways to sort of attack and defend blizzard world and nobody really has sort of like a dedicated this is how you do it strategy i mean there are multiple high grounds multiple positions there you can defend from you can defend from back you can defend from front it, it, it is going to be a difficult map so i think it's a bit of a toss-up between the two teams and if pentan is able to sort of hopefully adjust a little better maybe play to their strengths and then adjust to what uh expandable odyssey is able to sort of run uh it'll be very interesting and maybe they'll give them the leg up here because all the different stages of blizzard world play fairly differently whereas like the third stage of blizzard world plays very similar to the end of 66 uh, and then the streets phase of, of Blizzard World plays similarly to Hollywood with its bends and turns and high grounds all over the place. So it's going to be very interesting to see how both of these match up on this map. Yeah, and like you were saying, the one interesting thing with Blizzard World that sort of sets it apart is the first and third points are very goatsable. So very, you can run goats on both those without really any issues. But on the second point, it sort of gets this mix-up because even though there's high ground, it's a low high ground, which doesn't give anyone much of like a vertical or like very good high ground cover which is what you'd normally play high ground for but it does keep you out of the range of the ride so sort of a little curveball in the middle of blizzard world is the best way to put it more than anything and what you can run and what's viable in blizzard world yeah so it, it'll be interesting between the both both the teams here oh just as a mention to everyone who has been watching the channel there are other games going on here in the Owlet League, just a shout out to all the nine o'clock games that were going on. Uh, you can visit Love Gangster and Raygon. Uh, they are going to be casting the Burn versus Megs Majors match on Love Gangster's channel, twitch.tv forward slash Love Gangster. And uh, on the main channel, it is 1516 versus Boosted by the Way. They're going to probably be starting their fourth map here on the Owlet Tournament channel. So, a couple of games going on at the same time as ours, but if you are watching the Penten Viserion Expandable Odyssey match, thank you so much. Uh, I am your caster, Hoda Hori, co uh, accompanied here by Pulse, and our producer, his channel is the one that is hosting this right now, Mr. Silent Marine. Uh, please give him a follow up in the corner right there. Give him some love, and because he's going to be starting to host channel uh, host games on his channel, it's a great way to build up your channel and build up your notoriety a little bit and get followers to know uh, to, to see you actually do your thing here on your own personal channel. So good stuff to everybody that's casting right now. Um, sometimes... Uh, when this happens, when there are multiple games going on at the same time, somebody runs a multi-twitch where you'll be able to see all three games sort of going on at the same time. It is a feast for the senses for everyone. So it is going to be one of those things uh, towards the later on in the season when the casters are off break. Uh, you'll see mul lots of multi-twitches up when there are going to be like five or six games going on at the same time. It's almost as if you're like at a Buffalo Wild Wings pulse. Is like you can sort of pick your poison up to what game yeah, you want to watch. Good <laughs> you can your local Overwatch tournaments. And speaking of Overwatch, uh, once the Overwatch League actually starts, uh, Buffalo Wild Wings is one of the places that you can actually catch live games. You know that? <laughs> I, I can't do, but that's, that's good to know. 
Uh, I know they started broadcasting them towards the playoffs, really, on a, one of the ESPNs, like ESPN2 or something, the Disney XD, mm -hmm. and one or two other channels, but I can't quite remember which what all the channels are. You'd have to look them up to find them. Yeah, it was um, Disney XD, and I think they were doing it on ESPN+. Plus, So you could watch Plus, it on... Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, like, and one and two. So it could have been, which is one of those things in which, because they do have that, like, deal with Disney... So it'll be very, it's it's sort of interesting. I mean, like, I actually did catch a replay of it on at uh, Buffalo Wild Wing, which is the only reason that I know that is actually shown there. And it, it's somewhat interesting because people were asking questions as to why there was a video game on, on one of the televisions. And me being my helpful self would try to explain what was going on. And, you know, either people are like, hey, that's pretty cool. Or people are like, I, I don't get it. And, you know, that's the generation we live in now. It's like there are people who are wholly accepting of esports, and then people who just don't sort of get it. So, sort of interesting. But as more and more as more and more and money gets thrown into esports and into, uh, you know, like lower level tournaments like this, people will start to realize that, you know, video games are not just... Video games are not just uh, for the kids and stuff. You can actually make big, big money playing video games. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> But we do see something coming out from the deep that's very similar stylistically to Horizon. So we'll see if uh, teams sort of figure it out, but it looks like we see Pen 10 sort of doing what Expandable just did on Horizon with the fashion strat on a forward high ground. And this is very sort of easy to counter if we see the Goats comp just speed boost pass and go to point because then it forces the Bastion to relocate low ground and it throws a couple kinks into the plan. So we'll see how they play this. And then you say that, and here they come on a goats comp here. So it's going to be a matter, and they actually do what you exactly said that they were going to do, but they lose Trimitar uh, on the way there. So they do lose one, and that could be big, because they do lose, uh, the one that they lose is the Brigitte. And everybody here slowly getting a little low, and Penten Viserion here with a pretty decent kill kill feed on their side as it looks like the res was trying to come in it looks like dc and jack only the last two members going out jack able to take down a love that is a pretty big kill here if they're able to speed back harvani here trying to make sure that jack is dealt with there on the side as it looks like it's going to be a reset here for expandable honesty yeah it will be a reset but they definitely need to be careful of sort of that defense because had the brigitte not fallen early in that fight they might have just boosted the that. Yeah, Celery spamming down here grenades, trying to see if he can sort of lower the uh, the HP of everybody coming in. If the Diva actually comes in, Jax might not want to go into a 6v1 up at the top as Squirtle Squirk actually is able to knock, knock down Click Clack, and this fight is starting off the way that it had happened before, but they end up giving the tick away. Jack here with the Graviton will catch them all in the corner as Aleb and Squirtle Squirk will go down as it looks like the defense here are going to actually be able to sort of hold off a little bit as it looks like they forced off members here of the offense. Rippin' Pippin got hooked and killed there by Cortana, uh, by Carvana, excuse me. Jack is able to eliminate Samson as one by one. It looks like the defensive members are starting to go down. Try it, Trimitar here getting rid of Carvana and uh, Jack. Now they're going to try their luck. It looks like with 3v1 as Infestus, uh, Alove, and it looks like the Daria, Jack, trying to see if they can sort of move them along. DC here trying to sort of split up Penta and Viserion. They're a little bit all over the place, and now all the members here of Expandable Odyssey are able to sort of start taking them out one by one. Celery and Alev goes down. There was an ult used there by the Bastion, but he's unable to get anybody. This is just slowly but surely uh, killing some time off, but I think Expandable Odyssey will have point A. Yeah, Expandable Odyssey eventually getting it. It was a little bit of stagger, but we saw... Pen 10 sort of just use all of their alts the fight before that, so they didn't really have any defense that they wanted. They used like Tire, Whole Hog, and we just see Pen 10 sort of just walk in because it's like, I right, used all of them last fight, what do you got for Yeah, it's exactly right. Now they're sort of bone dry. A Love here, the only person with an alt here uh, on the side of the defense, as uh, it looks like the offense here are going for about five. Rippin Pippin's 5% away from his ult. And this is super advantageous here for Expandable Odyssey, as Odyssey here are just going to try to exert their will, slowly but surely move the payload if they remember to stay on it. <laughs> it looks like they're going to have to fall back a little bit here and sort of move the payload. Celery here in the back doing a pretty decent job of trying to stall the payload, but he actually 
pays with it with his life as now the fight has actually transposed itself onto the bottom corner. Diva Bomb gets sent up into the air. Harmana trying to get away from it, unfortunately will get blown up as the kill feed is just full of members from Expandable Auto. And this is sort of the territory that we go into because Expandable Odyssey is rough. And one really important part of GOATS that they've been doing incredibly well so far has been all cycling. And if you look at the top right, that just means they always have three or four check marks up every single fight for them to use. Yeah, as a uh, engage actually starts a little early here, and two kills are early here by Benton by Fizerion here, are going to sort of force the action a little bit, but they've lost two as Hephaestus and Samson go down here, and now they lose a love too. Carvana here using the ult to try to sort of stall this off as best as they can. Squirtle scoring in the back line is able to take DC and rip and Pippin down. So big, big kills here from Squirtle Squirt, trying to win this fight all by himself, as he on that tracer with the changes coming in with the uh, with the reduction in armor. Squirtle Squirt's participation here on the Tracer, paying dividends, and they're able to sort of hold right before point B. They look like they weren't quite prepared for Squirtle Squirt coming back on the Tracer, because we see him still trying to push the front as the Tracer's taking down the Lucio and demacking the Diva and just being a general nuisance. So now they know the Tracer's different. They know they if they've been pressing tab and keeping track on what they have, they know they have Reaper now as well. So a lot more threatening to sort of use close tank. Yeah, as, as, as a rally comes out here from Trimitar, as he's trying to make sure that his team stays alive in these engages, uh, Lucio ult here just to reinforce what's been going on, so an extra shield here to make sure that they win the fight. they not really overusing two support ults, but they ensure they win the fight here. Gonna, ca gonna capture point B, and they still have plenty of ults here to get to finish stuff off as Alov and Samson here get taken out, but it looks like they made them use the Graviton here, uh, where, uh, where as they're going to still need to go through most of the section in the middle here. Carvana and Celery are sort of trapped here. They're doing a really good job sort of mowing them down, but the payload still hasn't really gone through the first section here of point B. So them using their ult here, uh, somewhat advantageous a little bit. A little bit for the defense, but they did get a lot of stagger kills, and they're almost back up to... So... They, they still had the most important all, which is Transcendence, because Transcendence is incredibly powerful by any standard in the game. It can block pretty much anything except for Riptire, Diva Bomb, and uh, a Fauna Nade. But they're yeah. all the way back up to having four, four and a half alts already. So Zarya's approaching grab, Ryan and Brig are almost at their respective alts. And we see the defense coming in with only really a Shatter and a Moira ult. Nothing that really stops the defense. And speaking of a Diva Bomb there, Jax is able to take out Celery, and the Transcendence came out to make sure that everybody stayed alive. But a big, big Shatter here by Samson is able to slow that down. Hephaestus is able to get Click Clack down, and it looks like here uh, the defense from Penta Vizron might be able to hold it a little bit. Carvana here is trapped on the hamster, unable to do anything about it. Four members still stay alive here from Expandable Odyssey as they're able to sort of push them back into spawn here. Uh, Squirtle Squirt now has gone to the Pharah, is able to take Jax down, but still not able to sort of slow down this payload. Samson gets a big charge here on in Jack and able to take them out here. Finally, it looks like they're able to sort of stabilize a little bit as DC starts to come back. Another Shatter coming in, but it looked like it got nullified. He's not going to be able to stay alive. Samson gets res, though. Big play there by Hephaestus as they're fighting right at the end of or right at the end of point C. Big charge comes in, but DC is able to survive it, and now Lucio all comes in to maintain this sort of offensive push. Celery is going to send the dragon right onto the payload to force him off and split the team. DC and Jax here are able to get the kills that they need as Squirtle Squirt now with a desperation barrage to see if they can slow them down. Rally came out by Trimitar is going to force the action, and now they're going to have to commit. Samson comes in, gets caught up in the Graviton. Payload still moving. Hephaestus can't get anywhere near it, and they do complete Blizzard World. Good job here by Expandable Odyssey, and great ult rotation, as you said, by them on the offense. One interesting thing about that was that throughout pretty much all of Point C, there was not a contest by either team. The whole thing was a brawl, and it was pretty much like a 5v5 or a 4v4 for most of that, so uh, if you want to sort of stop a team rolling through you like that, it's really important to stay in spawn and make sure you regroup a 6 before going out to contest the cart. And neither team really did that, but it ended up working in the favor of Expandable just because they were running sort of that triple support, triple tank, which means that you're pretty much always going to have two, two tanks and two supports up at any given time, and it's still going to be really hard to chunk through that as just 
sort of a two-two-two team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, they were playing that to uh, they were playing that to perfection there. At the end, it looks like when they did lose two members, there were two members ready to just sort of pick up the slack and sort of fill in the gaps where they needed. And now, um, Bax gets the wall here for a pen ten by Sirion. They know they have to complete. This is not one of those maps in which uh, completing is not as a, is a guarantee either. Uh, they forced the action. It only they only had about 14 seconds left to actually complete Blizzard Blizzard World, but it is going to be one of those things in which, within over a minute, they need to complete. Even if they complete in overtime, they're going to get some time back here because the time bank is under one minute. So. Pens and Viserion know what they have to do, and it looks like here they're going to go... It looks like sort of a modified dive here, Pulse. So maybe they're going to try to see if they can sort of... Uh, sort of just jump at them and maybe force the action in a brawl, maybe. This looks like a sort of attempt to counter GOAT. And I'd really like to see Squirtle Surg sort of walk out of Sombra and scout before they do it, and it's exactly what they're actually doing to make sure that their comp is going to work against this. And if I were them, I'd probably honestly change a little bit up just because they do have this Ash coming into play and they're running a more Lucio. So Ash has a lot of damage over time, and while you are going to outheal, it's going to re reduce pretty much all of your Mortar's health bar or waste amp, which is not something you want to take a fight with. Yeah, as it looks like Squirrel Squirt here is trying to look for a hack target uh, as the, the dive actually will come in. Celery actually is able to take Jack out, so the Ash will not come into play here as it looks like this Brawl is actually continuing on the point, but now here comes Expandable Odyssey getting two kills here of their own. Celery taking down DC. They refuse to go down. Aleph getting demecked here, but Celery doing a lot of the damage here on the offensive push, taking down Rippin' Pippin but it looks like they're still down. Uh, they are actually up 4v3, but the diva is out of mech. So Bunny blastering their way, trying to get back. Ayla finally gets the mech back. Hephaestus keeping everybody up. Samson charging back in. They need to get on point here, and they want to contest and force them out. As it looks like Jax is going to get demeched. Primatar here uh, getting hacked and EMP. Going to be able to sort of knock him down. Click Clack gets taken down too. And now it looks like Penta Viserion here has to deal with DC up at the top, but they do have a huge numbers advantage. They do have numbers advantage, and we do see another type of advantage coming on. That's the alt bank that they build up. They did let go of point one, but they pretty much have six as soon as the card comes out. So they're, if they're able to hold at this corner, which is a very good corner for a bob, or even like Ryan Chatters around the corner, or some surprise diva bombs, then that's sort of the first choke of point B that you have to expect. Reaper actually came out here, but uh, unfortunately wasn't able to sort of do anything. Uh, as it looks like here, now the defense has sort of started to fall back as Primatar blew that ult, unable to do anything. Diva Bomb gets sent up into the air. Samson able to easily block that with his shield as it looks like the members here of uh, Expandable Odyssey just sort of spreading out on the bottom, knowing that looks like the members here of Fensive Fyterian will be coming here in a sec. Big shatter here by DC is able to catch Samson and Carvana as down they go. Down goes the bunny by Alev, who had been demecked. And Hephaestus is going back up here. They're able to stop the payload here before that uh, first bottom corner. And uh, with an ult advantage here, looking like not going to be in the favor of Expandable Odyssey. They've got to be able to hold another big fight here uh, at the choke. Uh, definitely to hold the fight. The, sort of the break condition for this. So, like The way for them to easily break through this defense would be wait for EMP Eva Bomb. But if they're going to be forced to sort of blow alts in order to save their team here, then they might sort of be able to just be run through right now. Yeah, that Bob actually got forced onto the high ground. It was a very weird positioning here. Coalescence coming out from Hespestus, trying to make sure the team stays alive. Diva Bomb got mispositioned. It was actually on top of the building as they were trying to send it up top of the payload. EMP comes out here and all of uh, Expandable Odyssey has been hacked and Celery gets a huge tire here. Now they just sort of have to keep Jax here in the background as Jax has to retreat. He's going to probably get demeked if he doesn't get caught, but the, the fight has gone the way here of Penten. And they're definitely respecting Celery right now on the junk rap. They're not really... Celery's been opening a lot of these fights. Either it's Tyre or some double kunks we've seen, some famous double kunks to just get an early pick. Uh, they did have a little bit of a numbers advantage, the defense, when they backed up, but they didn't just want to feed more Tyre to Celery at this point because he's been building this pretty fast. Yeah, and uh, you know, a huge big five ult advantage here 
uh, from the team. They've got the touch now because they're about to hit the, the point. They actually ended up giving it up for free as they do capture point B. My goodness, that might have been a mistake here from Expandable Odyssey uh, because th that's going to change the spawn rotation up. Trimatar actually does get Samson down. That payload is still going to move. That was, I think, a positioning mistake here by Expandable Odyssey. So my goodness here, they're getting forced back into, uh, into the castle here a little bit as now they realized uh, they've actually capped the point with 3.30 on the clock. My goodness, a uh, huge advantage here coming in for Pen 10. And what we were talking about earlier with Wizard Worlds, normally this is in those maps, it's very hard to get point A and it's very hard to get point B. So by the time you're in point C or in this sort of Diablo themed castle, you're only looking at one, maybe two minutes at a clock. And they're running in here. And even though the defense just really won their first fight in a while by using the Reaper alt, the Nano Boost, they still have upwards of six pushes left to just force their way to the end. So Pen 10 looking really good here. And some of that's also honestly just because we see the defense just giving up a lot of space, backing up when they're running these GOATS comps, even at, when they're at advantages. They don't, they look like they're a little bit confused on uh, sort of pressing their advantages on Blizzard World specifically. Yeah, that Squirrel Squirt Garrett gets a huge early kill here on Jack with an EMP already into the background. Here, though the Shatter actually come in as DC was not in the area as DC is by himself and surrounded by masses of uh, Penta and Viserion here. He's going to get swung out and killed there. Carvana puts him out of his mercury and putting him in the hole. Payload here moving in as Samson gets was charging in. Possibly that wall actually saved him because he was probably going to end up in no man's land with that charge. He was not going to hit anyone. Lucio ult here on the defense. Another Shatter comes in. It's going to cap champion. The salary goes down too. As now it looks like the defense here able to sort of stabilize. A love here on the Roadhog trying to sort of stay alive, but they're falling back. Jack and that uh, May here doing a number here on the offense, and now a full reset coming in here from Penta by Syria. Yeah, Hephaestus gets out as well, so there's not going to be a sag there. We do see a whole hog coming up by EMP getting dangerously close, which is something that the defense really needs to worry about when you're running a okay? because it pretty much makes it so that any effects you put on them are like May can't ice wall to purge, Reaper can't raid form to self purge, so very dangerous to get into this defending comp when you're running sort of these, these slow moving DPS without a whole lot of mobility. And honestly, they're still in the range where they have one or two fights that they can just play for alts and save up if they need to. Yeah, as uh, Squirrel Squirt there, going for a big hack there on the Rippin' Pippin. Uh, able to keep him alive, but Jax actually took down Ayla. Trimatar here coming in with the, uh, with the ult here, trying to see if he can get anybody. Does get two. Hephaestus and Carvana go down. This is just a push in which the uh, the defense here are going to be blowing ults as the rest of the members here of Penta and Viseron are able to sort of build up a little bit here. They still have 50 seconds on the clock here, so possible two pushes left. Yeah, and they definitely, if they take these fast, they can definitely get two. Since one of them will likely be in the overtime push, and they just need careful. They can push and that in. There's the EMP there from uh, uh, from the uh, Snoopy. Um, as it looks like Celery here is able to sort of take down two with the tire. EMP combo pays off. DC going in for a slam. Does not get it. 23 seconds here left on the clock. We're going to go into time bank, folks. As it looks like the members of Penten Viseron were able to combine their ults perfectly on that final push. Getting the big EMP from the, uh, the Sombra at Squirrel Squirt hits everybody in the background, combining with the tire. Minutes added to both teams, and then there's only about a five second advantage here to Penta and Viseron, so it will be expandable Odyssey here on offense for. They definitely need to be careful about the time bank. They have five seconds more, but on the advantage for them is they capped with more time than the expandables did, and it's sort of. We've seen a little bit of a weakness from Expandables that we haven't seen before. They're not very good at, they're sort of giving up a lot of space, especially in Escort maps, which is the other map type that um, we've seen picked up by Penten. So mm -hmm. it, it looks like they might be a little weak on Escort, and both the first points for both teams was a little bit more brawly than expected. But if it goes into the Escort phase, I think Penten has a really good chance of picking up this map and sending us to a game five. Yeah, they absolutely do because they just seem like they, they, they play better knowing that, you know, they have a payload to push and basically keeps them sort of together. Like a lot of the a lot of the issues that they might have uh, on a sort of stationary sort of section of a map doesn't like 
doesn't actually come out when they're actually knowing that they sort of have to move a payload uh, down like a certain street or something like that. So it's very interesting to see what is going on. So with Penten here now on defense, uh, they're going to be trying to sort of hold this as best as they can. Our Carvana and team here going to signing, bring the, uh, the, uh, it looks like the, uh, Symmetra is going to be here now. And now it looks like they're going to just sort of be fighting a GOATS team. DC just trying to sort of zoom in to that, those, those turrets there in the back doing a number on all the members here are going to be on the point. Carvana is able to take out Trimitar, but it's about how much space you're willing to give up. Squirtle Squirt doing what he can there on the Symmetra and using those turrets to their fullest is able to take down the members here of Expandable Odyssey with only 19 seconds left to go here. It's going to be a bit of a desperation push uh, here at the very end. It definitely will because they're going to have to leave Jack behind at spawn while they retake or if they won't have enough time to get anyone. So as they push push in, they don't have any really alt advantage, any percentage, while they do have a Sim Barrier that just came out. Yeah, the Sim Barrier though is going to split the fight. So the team here has just got to be careful. Hephaestus has got taken down. But the advantage here is with Expandable Odyssey. They do lose, uh, they do kill two. But Squirtle Squirt taking out two, taking out three on that Symmetra, doing a number here on Expandable Odyssey. It's only Jack. What can Jack do for you? Jack can't do anything, unfortunately. <laughs> can we? Uh, so it will be a full hold here from Expandable Odyssey, uh, from uh, Penta and Vizeron. So their fate is in their hands. Remember, if this is a draw, this actually goes to Expandable Odyssey as the win. So therefore, it will be a 2-1 win. Expandable Odyssey need to hold here, and they can still win this match. Uh, Penta and Viserion here need a tick. And a tick here was something that they were easily able to come by, but with one minute, mistakes here are at a premium. You make a mistake, this could be, this could be it. And we saw a really good defense adjustment from... Uh, pen 10 there when they were running the bastion sort of forward high ground hold before they're like nah, it didn't really work for us so they swapped squirrel square to the sim and expandable really not sure how to prioritize the turrets there and since they really didn't the turrets cleaned up that entire last fight they got four kills and a really big sort of underrated part about that was definitely the symmetra barrier and that's because if you're not barrier mechanics barriers completely stop any aura healing going through so Brig, Lucio lose a lot of their effectiveness when playing into a sim ult. Yeah, and a lot of people forget about that. They forget that the that the barrier does does actually stop healing. So you almost have to position yourself together and group up. But now it looks like here it's going to be a high a high ground hold with the with the Bastion Jack trying to make up for what he did before. Here we go. Time already coming down here. As it looks like Penta and Viserion here are going to lose their D.Va right away. A-Love immediately gets d -Mac. They're going up for the far side as they look like they're going to try to teleport to the far side of the map and go directly onto the point. Look at this. They're going to fight onto the point here and see if they can just sort of force out uh, the members here of Expandable Odyssey. They do get a kill on Jack, so this is going to be your fight, folks. They need to sort of stay alive. Expandable Odyssey needs to sort of make sure they stay on the point as it looks like here Hephaestus is trying to keep Celery alive. The fight and the brawl will be here. Aleph going to get demecked again. Not going to be able to survive. They've gotten uh, about a half of the pick back. 19 seconds. Carvana takes down Click Clack. If they can get back together here, they'll have a shot at the final push. 12 seconds left to go. It looks like Rippin' Pippin gets a huge kill on Celery, and Aleph goes down along with it. They're going to have to push two men down. Teleporter comes in. That's going to get blown up. Samson hits into the thing. They're going to only be able to fight with fight. Rippin' Pippin has been huge here. Takes Samson down, and the Transcendence comes out because of all the killing he's done. Defense comes back. It looks like Trimantar is going to finish off Asbestos, and they're not going to be able to get this push. It's going to be a draw here on the yeah, Celery is able to jump on in. Here we go. It looks like the Symmetra ult able to come in, but Aleph still able to get d -Mech as it looks like the Bongos drop down. Samson tries to get back on the point, and that's going to be that. It is a draw, but with that whole expandable Odyssey, win this match two to one over Penta and Viserion. I told you this was going to be going down to the wire and Squirtle Squirt and company just unable to close it out there at the end, but super, super close there and a great effort by Penta and Viserion. Congratulations to Expandable Odyssey. They get the win, but they get it by the hair of the chin chin chin. Yeah, very close draw coming through on that.
both teams sort of at a loss at how to play into Symmetra on that and not really prioritizing the turrets as much as they needed to to make sure that weren't taking consistent damage from them. So a little bit more careful when playing in Symmetra turrets, but other than that, I really liked sort of how they were playing with the Symmetra, how they're using the teleporters to make sure that they got the point. I really liked how both teams sort of used it to relocate back to the high ground and back to the point. So a lot of really good ideas coming out there, just the mechanics ended up falling a little bit short. Yeah, just fell a little short there, and Pentan Vizerion gave it a go there and just unfortunately came up short. That final fight just is one of those things in which um, is just they needed a couple of extra kills and they would have been able to do it, and they were so sneaky about it. They were, te they were moved over to the right to see if they could teleport all to the point, but I think losing their D.Va at the very beginning when they were moving in was what really shut them down, unfortunately. And just not having that extra defense matrix, I think, was just unable to sort of keep them available onto the point there. So just tough luck by, by Pentan there, but good job there by Expandable. <laughs> Expandable Odyssey. I, uh, they want to play Oasis here just for... For sort of s and giggles here but it'll end up being a try hard scrim but i think we'll just let them sort of record it on their own uh so final thoughts here pulse on this match on this win here by expandable odyssey they honestly looked pretty good coming in through the map we saw a lot more designated team comps from them they like sort of definitely had preset things that they want to run like they practice goats which is a very strong meta comp even though it's sort of on its way down from being that 100% pick rate status to being like one of those things that you need to know, uh, like dive sort of is now, where it's good to know, good to practice, make sure that you understand how to play it and how to play against it. So a little bit more upkeep on the meta from them. I really liked Pen 10, how they were adjusting their comps, even though sometimes they're a little bit slower to notice it or they really want to get alts. Sometimes you just got to trash those a little bit faster, but they were making adjustments to play in expandables very well. Um, and then again, just both teams, like when you're sort of a little bit more experience playing into those bastions and sim comps because both teams looked a little bit lost whenever they came up against those sort of compositions yeah and at this level that's sort of expected because bastion is one of those sort of like sort of checks on people can you deal with the high damage and the spread that a bastion does and come up with a plan to sort of go around it so Yep, that's going to be it for us here. We're going to end the stream here. The team are going to go into a, like a, a little bit of a sort of scrim here. They're going to go play out Oasis because uh, they did have a very good match and both teams are evenly matched here. But that's going to do it for us here for the Owl Tournament. Remember, there are a couple other games going on, one on the main channel and one with on Love Gangster's channel. Uh, if those games are still going on right now, go ahead and check it out. Send them some love and go watch the other teams that are play in the tournament here on Saturday night. But that's going to be it for me and Pulse. Pulse, thank you so much for being my co-commentator as always. Thank you so much for being my play-by-play. -play. <laughs> and thank you to Silent Marine, who is that was kind enough to host this game and be our producer tonight, and uh, to, uh, to Zigox, who was our lobby host. But for Pulse, for Silent... I am Hodohori. Thank you so much for joining us for this special presentation of the Outlet Tournament here on Silent Marine's channel. It is a victory here for Expandable Odyssey. They win this match 2-1 to one over Pen 10 Viserion. Uh, that's going to do it for us. Check out your local listings. Uh, there are a slate of Sunday matches that are going to be going on. Too many to count for me and too many to mention as both of those are all of those are going to probably be scheduled starting at seven o'clock tomorrow. So stay tuned to your local listings and Owlet will be in full force tomorrow. But for Pulse, for Silent, I am Hodo. Thank you so much. We will see you next time. Hey everybody, thank you for watching the stream. Thanks for coming back after that accidental disconnect cancellation. Remember, you can always use the suggestion box if you have anything for me as a producer or streamer. I'm always looking for feedback for future events. Thanks for watching, and I will be producing on the main channel tomorrow, sun tomorrow Sunday night. So, we'll hope to see you then. Good night, everybody.